because we don't understand how life formed. It is difficult to estimate this probability. The likelihood of a complex molecule like DNA being created by random collisions of atoms in a primordial ocean is fantastically small. In an infinite universe, it would happen in some places, but they would be very far apart. If we want to find advanced intelligent life, our best bet is to listen for radio signals. Look up to the stars and the forest that surround. Do you see them? Do you hear them? Are they there? SpacedOutRadio.com presents S4 with Forest Moon Paranormal's Eric Cooper and friends. Also, take the time to join the Forest Moon Paranormal Facebook group. I knew I should have made a left turn in Albuquerque. Space travelers, it's time to go live on S4 with Eric Cooper. to be the Forest Moon Paranormals Paranormal Protection Class Audio, and it goes with the uh, PowerPoint that we've been, uh, that we've had in the group. So, this is a special edition, obviously, and uh, a lot of you have been biting at the bit about getting this audio, so we're going to go ahead and start going over it, and so slide one is dangers of the paranormal, uh, well, after the logistics portion of where the bathroom is and all that. <laughs> So what we look at is how to assess a client's location before we get there. The things we look at, slips and trips. You know, not not all the dangers of the paranormal are going to be spirits and, and you know, malevolent entities and whatnot. You got to look at the mundane uh, hazards as well. So slips and trips, uh, you know, if it's dark, you use a flashlight, you use a headlamp, things like that. Proper footwear is important. Beware of the hazards. If you're going into an old location, you want to look for, you know, loose boards, things you can trip on, uh, possible soft locations you can fall through, uh, things of that nature. You, you know, and you find those mostly in the hot spots. You go to Northern State Mental Hospital, for example, you, you, you're going into old barns, things like that. A client's home, uh, you know, they're going to let you know like, this room over here is, is, is kind of worn, whatnot. Uh, black mold, environmental hazards. We see black mold, we're putting masks on, we're getting out of the location. 
And in those cases, we're going to let the client know you've got black mold. You need to get a hold of your county health department uh, and get that taken care of. Black mold itself can cause hallucinations, breathing issues, uh, a, a lot of a lot of stuff. So we do carry masks in our truck um, for the team uh, in those events. But again, we find black mold, we're going to pull out and uh, advise the client to get the health department involved. Uh, monoxide levels, we don't have a monoxide detector. Those are somewhat expensive. <coughs> Another case, though, where, uh, you know, you monoxide you can't see, uh, you can't smell, you don't know it's there. Uh, but signs that it's there, you're going to watch for nausea, you're going to watch for uh, lightheadedness, uh, things of that nature. In those cases, you want to call the fire department. It's usually the fire department that goes in for uh, high, high carbon monoxide levels. Uh, the treatment for that is get the client to fresh air uh, and, and stay out of the location until proper authorities get there. Psychiatric criminal elements. You know, again... We get into that discussion with, do we carry firearms to a paranormal event? No. The only time I'll carry a firearm is if we're in a mountain uh, case where, you know, wildlife, things of that nature. Criminal elements, again, uh, you know, have, call in law enforcement if you have to. Uh, these are things we look at. Background awareness, uh, things like that with psychiatric or criminal elements. Uh, I, it's great that our team now has three psychiatrists. Well, one psychiatrist, one psychologist, and a child psychologist. So we do have psych elements uh, on board with our team. And, and that's where the uh, psychiatric assessment will come into play. So domestic violence, drug issues. Uh, again, I categorize that with psychiatric and criminal. Uh, if you kind of notice, you know, the clients are kind of standoffish with each other. Uh, those are signs of possible domestic, uh, along with bruising. If you notice that, you know, that they're trying to say it's paranormal, but you kind of use common sense and, and your own uh, awareness. So occult activity slash open portals or conjuring to be aware of. Watch for symbols, Ouija boards, tarot cards, etc. It kind of tells you what they're what they're into. Um, and that goes with our next training uh, in February. We're actually going to go over occult symbolism. Because, uh, you know, you walk in, you see a, a pentacle with a circle around it. That's what we call a, a pentacle. That is a symbol of protection. That's not conjuring. And so you need to know the difference between what a conjuring symbol looks like versus, a, you know, an inverted pent pentagram, which is usually satanic or severe occult. Uh, you, you need to know what you're looking at. Uh, UFO radiation or landing sites. We kind of covered that at this month's training, which I'll do that audio here. Maybe today, uh, maybe tomorrow. We'll, we'll see when I have time for it. Uh, so radiation, uh, poisoning, nausea, headache, dizziness, mood swings. Uh, and these uh, signs can also be attachment. Difference is uh, also with an attachment, you'll have pain on location. Uh, asbestos in buildings. Again, you have to look at the age of the building you're going into. Uh, and again, you want to wear a mask. You find out there's asbestos you want to pull out. Get the uh, proper authorities into it. Spirit attack. Well, you know what? This is where the astral team comes into play a lot, especially with boots on ground. Um, they can see what's going on. They can see uh, if there's attachments trying to form, and which goes along with attachment of entities. Uh, parasite, energy vamps. Uh, these are all part of the protection. We'll get to the stones and the herbs and whatnot later, which comes into play with some of that. Um, but with the astral team, uh, they, they always go in boots on ground with us. They can see what's going on. Uh, we have a medium on the team. She can usually pick up. She's a sensitive, so she can usually pick up as well. If something's trying to attack us. A magical community that likes to mess with people. We do get into that. And that's where somebody that says they're a witch, or in some cases they say they're a warlock. Well, <laughs> yeah, whatever. Um, but they, they, you know, they send attachments, they send entities, uh, and, and we handle those 
differently because we, we actually go in and deal with the individual that is attacking as well as taking care of the problem. So on the team, we also have a trauma kit that is in the truck uh, for medical issues. Um, the medical identification form for each team member, I did pass that out at this month's training. Uh, if you don't have it yet, let me know. It is also in the library. Fairies, that's a whole other issue. There's a, 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 over a hundred different kinds of fae. Yeah, some are good, some are bad. Uh, you can kind of tell uh, if fairies are around one by sparkles uh, in the corner of your eye. Uh, things being picked up, missing, that kind of thing. Uh, uh, again, the Astral team works on that. They, they take care of those kind of issues. And due to the fact that I'm just sitting here talking, this uh, audio is going to go a lot faster than what our actual class did because I don't have people asking questions. If you have questions over any of this, uh, send me a message directly. So the next slide is, if my PowerPoint will move here, Paranormal Protection. <coughs> so shielding. Shielding is important. It, uh, it, it keeps, it's not a, a, a fix-all. It protects you psychically. It can keep most attachments from coming around. So your basic shielding. I want you to close your eyes and picture a bubble of energy around you. It, it goes from the ground over your head. You're going to manipulate this bubble. It's like a white light. And it's a uh, kind of like a gel. Picture a gel. And what you're going to do is push that bubble as far as you want. Um, and when you walk, when you move, that bubble stays around you. Now, when you're working on shielding, this is a basic shield. Um, do some research. Find what shield works for you. Some some use a brick wall. Some use, uh, you know, get creative and do uh, traps and things like that. And... It's up to each individual. Now, a shield, though, you need to work on all the time. It's not a one time I'm going to put it up and I don't have to mess with it no more. It doesn't work that way. It's something you have to always work on. Um, grounding. Your best form of grounding is get barefoot. And I know uh, in some of our states and countries, it's cold as hell. <coughs> it's... Uh, you know, frozen out, snow, whatnot. This is something you want to do when you're comfortable. Now, when it's a little warmer out. Uh, best form of grounding those to get barefoot. Go out and, I won't say hug a tree, but put your hands on the tree. And I want you to picture a white light that goes from your head. And picture all that negative energy. And this is especially important if you're a medium. Uh, if you're uh, any, any form of, uh, you know, psychic. And you want to push all that energy from the top of your head through your feet and into the earth. Now with that, you want to pull the white energy that, that, that's in the earth back up into you. Because you're basically releasing the negativity into the earth, which absorbs it and turns it positive. Um, and this is where, you know, Forest Moon Paranormal gets called woo-hoo. We're, we're the woo-woo people and whatnot. Well, it works. It works. It protects you, makes you feel a whole lot better, and you know what? Screw them. Um, so basically, you're releasing the negative energy out of you and bringing the positive back in to fill it up. So uh, next is amulets and your belief system. Now, you, you know, and we're going to get into this a little bit, but uh, it really annoys me when I go to a group that I, we've been tagged in for a case and you got 11 billion people giving advice. And they say, you need to sage. You need to do this. You need to call in your priest. You need to call in the blood of Jesus. That doesn't work in about 9 out of 10 cases. Um, people need to understand that. But people are so sort of set in their ways that, you know, we've been doing this a while. We've been, Forest Moon's been around for 12 years as an official organization. And we, we deal with about five cases a day. 
So we're not new to this. <laughs> and, and, and I only speak about what works. And sage is not the first thing you do. Sage is what you do after you've cleared your home. Sage is your your home shield, essentially. So there was a scientific study, and I know smudging the sage is the last on this list, but we're going to talk about that for a second. kind of goes with your amulet and belief system. <coughs> your belief system is only as strong as your own belief in your system. So you can go there and call in your God's name and in the name of Jesus and, and whatnot. If you don't really believe in it, it's not going to work anyway. Now, bear in mind, when if I'm an atheist and I die, I'm going to be an atheist as a spirit. So if you go in with, you know, your, your reverend or your clergy, it, that spirit's going to laugh. They're not going to leave. They're going to laugh. And you just insulted them. And now they're going to be pissed off and, and probably act up even more. So, you know, things to think about before you just jump on people's advice. So my amulet is actually a pentacle. And that's my belief system. Some of you will wear crosses. Uh, some of you will wear an atom if you're, you know, uh, an atheist. They believe in the atom sometimes. It depends on the belief. Uh, so stones, um, I always carry a box anytime we go to a case. And your best protective stone is your uh, black tourmaline. I suggest you all go out and get one. If you're local, go to the Mortar and Pestle Apothecary downtown Mount Vernon. Donna Franklin owns it. She's on the team. And you can get a decent stone for about four bucks of the black tourmaline. Uh, hematite is a good one for uh, grounding. It looks kind of uh, like a metallic color. Uh, I also suggest tiger's eye or red tiger's eye, another protective stone. Uh, rose quartz, uh, I give kids. They're a pink stone and they're good for putting under the pillow or under the bed for keeping nightmares away. Again, like I said, uh, it's, it's one stone I keep a lot of because uh, I give that to kids. Kids are a high priority on the triage of uh, our cases. Herbs. So I don't have my list with me. Um, but your common herbs. Uh, I, I like patchouli for clearing an area. Uh, rosemary, excellent for removing entities or keeping entities at bay. Plant rosemary plants outside your home. Uh, rosemary oil is excellent. Uh, sage, obviously. Uh, so before and after a case. So bear in mind, uh, our clients have an open door policy with us for you know pretty much the rest of their lives. Uh, if anything comes back, things of that nature. Um, so <coughs> we're gonna you know get together, make sure everyone's all right before we go in. After the case, the astral team will let us know if we're clear. And we go home. Or actually, we don't go home. We uh, will have an after-action review. How things could have gone better. Uh, all the good points, the bad points. Uh, ways to improve on the team. Uh, smudging. So smudging and sage. Uh, like I said earlier, uh, you know what? Um uh, <laughs> Sage is not the first thing you go to. Sage is something that actually should be done after the case is done. Now, what I like to do is actually give the sage to the client and give them some instruction on what they need to do and let them do it. It gives them the power to take back over their home. And as they're, as they're smudging, you want to open the doors and the windows. That's That's pretty much the main thing. Everyone's got their personal point of view, their personal opinion on, you know, you got to do it clockwise, counterclockwise, go from starting this. No, it, it really don't matter. Sage is sage, it, as long as it gets in the room. Um, and, and as you're doing it, you're, you're letting the spirits know, or letting the universe know, that only good is welcome in my home. If you have evil intent, or your negative intent, you're not welcome here. And you got to mean it when you say it. Now, after you sage, 
Most people forget about drains. <coughs> so, you want to take a, a pinch of salt and get all your drains. Then you want to take a salt bath kind of thing and get your mirrors and your windows with a salt solution. There we go. Um, once that's done, I would recommend uh, either a black tourmaline in the windows, uh, on the windowsill, that kind of thing. Up to you. Personal point of view. Um, so shielding, again, what is it? Again, like I said, it is a bubble. Uh, it, it keeps most weaker forms out. You will get attacked. Your shield will get attacked. Shields get, can get tore down, depends on the strength of uh, what you're dealing with. Uh, and again, you don't want to think about it. It should always be there. And it takes time. It takes a lot of practice. Uh, what's it used for? I just told you. Uh, energy bubbles, what I, ta I, I taught you. Uh, brick wall, look it up. It's not recommended. Uh, again, it's personal preference. Garnet is another grounding stone. Uh, your animus and your belief, does religion matter? It really doesn't. Uh, belief in yourself, belief in your own ability, belief in your own power is what's most important. So stones, I already told you. Any, any, so any kind of black stone dispels negativity. It absorbs it. Black tourmaline is our uh, stone of choice in Forest Moon. Crystals, uh, so crystals can be a lot of things. You, some people can use crystals for healing. Uh, it, it's basically on your intent. You kind of charge your crystal and tell you, you, tell, you tell the crystal what you want to do, what its intention is. Uh, we can also use crystals to uh, capture spirits, lock them in it, and then we throw them in the bay. Salt water. Uh, not spirits. Spirits we pass over, but uh, any kind of malevolent entity. Uh, Rose Quartz, I already told you, hematite, we talked about amethyst as a pea stone. Excellent for protection. Bloodstone is usually used in uh, healing, but is also good for protection. Uh, the fire agate, another very strong stone, and the tiger eye. So here's the herbs. Sage, rosemary, acacia, agrimony. I love frankincense. We used it in uh, Iraq all the time. Frankincense and myrrh combined. Excellent. Uh, the egg root, aloe, and angelica is uh, phenomenal. If you can get angelica, it's used in uh, healing, protection. It's used in everything. Good overall stone to have. So the before and after a case, here we go. Team check. We check each other over, make sure we're all good. Attachments. Astral team's good on that one. Cleansing. You teach the uh, client how to do their own cleansing. You assist them if you have to. And protocols. So with the astral team, one of our protocols is they will touch base with headquarters here, go to the clients, handle the case, come back to headquarters. So if they're followed, we're shielded here. We have a, 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 intense sanctuary shields. So... That way they, they aren't followed, uh, they get the, whatever's following them is lost. And smudging, we went over that. So this is the Ghost Hunter's Prayer. I found it online. It's just a, uh, a basic prayer to the light. If you want to use it, by all means. If not, don't. <laughs> anyway, that sums up. Uh, and, and again, like I said, I know it was quick. We went over a lot more. Uh, actually, we didn't. But we had a lot of uh, stop and do questions. And uh, a lot of questions were asked. So, uh, any questions, of course, you can always contact me. And if you need help with grounding shielding, anything of that nature, by all means, get a hold of me. Now on that note,
Have a great day.